Hey guys, it's Lucky Ghost here. Okay, every once in a while I throw together one of these builds and it works as I expected it to. And then there's some times where it, you know, it just doesn't turn out quite as well as normal. This is one of those builds that just came together and outperformed my wildest expectations. I came into this with fairly low expectations for the Stamina Dragonite, but holy cow, after this, I have a completely new outlook on the solo Stamina Dragonite. This is going to completely change how I rank the Dragonite against all of the other classes when I put together my next solo tier list this build just trucked its way through veteran solo content and it had amazing sustain like i just did never run out of resources the damage was amazing and not once did i ever feel like i was in danger it was almost too easy i had to stop and check to make sure i was in veteran and not in normal vodatron multiple times because i couldn't believe it i'm gonna go ahead and play my trifecta run here in the background while i'm going over all of the skills and everything so you can see yourself how this performs how incredibly strong it is i set a personal best for how fast i got through vatashan hollows i mean i i don't know what more i could say to hype this build up it's a good one it came together and i hope you enjoy it as always if you enjoy the build and find it helpful please be sure to like and subscribe so that you can get alerted to my next video about elder scrolls online in this video i'm going to be going over race mundus attributes consumables gear skills rotation passives and champion points so that you can create exactly this build and most importantly so you know how to play it once you've built it and as always i'm going to link the written guide in the description below in case you want to refer to that after you've listened to this video all right now let's begin with race for the race you can go with khajiit or dark elf if you want to go for the most damage just behind them is the orc and just behind him with sustain bonuses are going to be red guard and wood elf for the mundus we're going to be taking lover while we're soloing and while you're in a group, you can take Thief or Shadow. For the attributes, we're going to put all 64 points into Stamina. And as for our consumables, we're going to be using Lava Foot Soup as our food. And for our potions, you can use Essence of Stamina potions when you're doing something basic or something simple. And then when you're doing something that's requiring you to try extra hard, go ahead and slot those Essence of Weapon Power potions. These are the ones that are going to give you Major Brutality, increasing your weapon damage by 20%. They're going to give you Major Savagery, increasing your critical rating and they're going to restore stamina while increasing your stamina recovery. These potions are incredibly powerful. Do not underestimate how much power they add to your character. Okay, now let's start with the gear that made this build tick. I'm going to give you two options for gear. I'm going to give you the best in slot setup, and then I'm going to give you something that's almost as good, but doesn't require any trial gear. So what I wore in this run was one piece slime crop. Slime Crop provides the most crit chance for any one piece item in the game. We're only wearing a one piece of a monster set because we're going to be wearing the Ring of the Pell Order. The Ring of the Pell Order is incredibly strong now, and it's going to be even stronger when Blackwood drops. It's getting buffed to 20% and they're removing the health cap on the ticks that you get back. This ring is so fun and it's about to be even more so. We're going to be pairing with those two five piece sets, one of which is Relican. Relican is an amazing set for single target damage and it's fantastic when it comes time to start parsing down a large HP enemy like a boss, a world boss, an arena boss like in Maelstrom Arena or in Vodashon Hollows, right? And it gets Minor Slayer. It's just one of the most perfect sets in the game and there's a reason so many builds call for it. It's incredibly powerful. The next five piece set is going to be Zogvin. Zogvin is incredibly good for soloing for multiple reasons and it frees up a bar slot because it gives us minor force as a five piece bonus which means we don't have to slot barb trap. I wasn't sure if I was going to find an effective way to take advantage of this free space but man did I ever. And then there's one other great thing about Zogvin that's really effective in solo. In solo, one of the most important things is that we have enough penetration. We almost never have enough penetration while soloing on a stam tune, but this set gives us 1,470 physical pens, so it's adding quite a bit to our penetration with the four piece bonus, and it's providing an insane amount of crit. On the front bar, I would go with a two handed maul if you can get one. However, I had to go with the great sword because the maul there, as you can see, is the only two handed weapon I've just never picked up in Frostfall. The reason I would go for the mall is for the extra penetration. As I just mentioned, Stam tunes are underpenning a lot right now, and 
Malls are a great way to alleviate that problem. For the back bar, we're gonna go with the Maelstrom Perfected Bow. This bow is still so incredibly effective. The way it buffs your Endless Hail and also procs your weapon damage enchantment, it's so effective and I still love using it on so many builds today. So that's the gear. Now let's talk about the skills. The first ability on the front bar is Venomous Claw. This ability does an insane amount of dot damage over 14 seconds and the poison seeps into the target and deals increased damage the longer it lasts, dealing 20% more damage every two seconds. That means by the last tick of this 14 second dot, it is hitting so hard and you can see those ticks tick down on your enemies. They are incredible. So what you're going to want to make sure you don't do with this ability is reapply it early, right? Because those last ticks are hitting so fast freaking hard you don't want to reapply this one early you want to make sure it takes all the way down falls off before you reapply it but it is insanely powerful so don't let it fall off for too long make sure you reapply it right away once it does the second ability on the front bar is brawler now normally with brawler builds my number one adversary is sustain brawler builds are so powerful but you know you're usually struggling to keep your sustain up you're running out of stamina constantly not this build this build was so powerful i didn't have any sustain problems we have a mix of mag and stam abilities it's almost a bit of a hybrid build, and we'll touch on those a little bit more later, but because of that, our sustain is absolutely insane. All right, Brawler is one of my favorite abilities in the game because it's an AoE ability. It does damage to everything in front of you, and it puts a shield on you that is larger for every enemy you hit. So if you hit more enemies, you get a bigger shield. So the more things you're fighting, the safer you are in a lot of ways, which makes it an incredibly fun and satisfying ability to use in actual content. For the third ability, we're going to be using Executioner. This is a single target execute ability, meaning when the enemy gets around 31% health, you can start beating on it with this ability. You can stop using Brawl and start using Execute right around 31%. Unless you have a lot of things attacking you, then probably it's safer to keep brawling, right? Keep that shield on you because it's more important that you don't die than you do a little extra damage to one of the targets. Plus, Brawl is going to hit all of them where Execute's only going to hit one. So if you have two or three things attacking you probably keep brawling until you're down to the last one and then use execute the fourth ability on the front bar is volatile armor volatile armor is both a buff and a dot on the enemies it's going to be giving us major resolve, increasing our resistances by 6,000. That's massive. We're going to take significantly less damage while this is up. And we release a spray of spikes, dealing 7,000 damage to our enemies over 10 seconds. And also remember, all of these numbers are unbuffed and out of combat. In actual combat, all of these numbers are significantly larger. They're doing quite a bit more damage than they say here on the tooltip while we're just standing here. The fifth ability on the back bar is another mag ability. Look, these are both mag abilities. This is part of why our sustain is so fantastic on this character. This is consuming trap. We're going to lay claim to the enemy's soul, right? Dealing a ton of damage to the enemy over 10 seconds. It's a nice 10 second dot that does a ton of damage. And also when that enemy dies, it gives us all three resources back. It's going to give us 4,000 health, 2,500 magica, and 6,300 stamina, right? Just a ton of these resources are coming back if the enemy dies while well, that dot's on it. So if you ever happen to get low on resources, all you have to do is start casting Consuming Trap on things before they die, and your problem will be fixed immediately. But while I was running this dungeon, I never ran out of resources. I have enough mag abilities mixed in with my stam abilities that my sustain was just nutty. The fifth ability on the front bar is Flawless Dawnbreaker. This holds us here more as a bar buffer. You're not really going to use this if you're doing something difficult or if you're fighting a boss because our back bar ultimate is so much more effective. However, if you don't have enough ult charge to cast the back bar ult and you really want to pop your ultimate before the battle's over, Flawless Dawnbreaker is not a bad option. It does a good amount of damage and it gives you an extra 300 weapon damage for 16 seconds after you pop it. So it's a really nice ultimate. On some builds, Builds, I use it, but not on this build, just because of how good our actual class ultimate is. On the back bar, we're going to be using Endless Hail. This is going to synergize incredibly well with our Maelstrom Bow. The last ticks of Endless Hail do the most damage. So just like Venomous Claw, you never want to reapply Endless Hail early when you're using the Maelstrom Bow, because every tick does more damage than the tick before it. Let your Endless Hail expire all the way. The second ability on the back bar is going to be Noxious Breath. This is a fantastic dot, but it does more than that. It also applies major Major breach reducing the enemy's resistances by 6,000. This is huge. This is going to give us even more penetration, right? We're getting the penetration from the Zogvin. We're getting the penetration from Noxious Breath. We're getting the penetration from our Lover Mundus. We are getting penetration all over the place, and you really feel it in this build. The third ability on the back bar is Resolving Figure. This is our heal. This is our oh sh button, right? As soon as you get into danger, just pop your Resolving Vigor and do a roll dodge. By the time your character stands up, you're going to be back at full health and ready to start brawling and laying down your dots again. 
The fourth ability on the back bar is Flames of Oblivion. This is dealing almost 6,000 damage every six seconds. It's a decent dot and it costs mag. And while it's slotted, we get Major Prophecy and Major Savagery, right? Which we're already getting from our potion, but this means that anytime we're on our back bar, even when we're running our trash potions, we're gonna have that buff, which is kind of nice. Now, do note that when you switch to the front bar, you do not get any of those slotted passives you earn from slotting abilities, right? On the back bar. So on the front bar, you would not have that buff, but anytime you're back here, you get the major savagery, increasing your critical rating. We're going to be using our potions when we're in difficult content that give us this buff at all times anyway, so it's not a big deal. Then finally, we're using Molten Whip. This is a bar buffer. We're not touching this ability. But the reason we're slotting it back here is it says, while slotted, whenever you activate an Ardent Flame ability, you gain a stack of Seething Fury, which increases the damage of your next Molten Whip by 33%. That's not important. What is important is it also increases our weapon and spell damage by 60 for five seconds. And we can have up to three stacks. So with this passive here, you're going to get between 120 and 180 extra weapon damage and spell damage while you're going through the content, while you're casting these abilities these are ardent flame abilities right here your noxious breath and your flames of oblivion and then last but definitely not least we've got the ultimate the standard of might such an incredibly powerful ultimate for dragon knights this ultimate does a decent dot to everything that's within the radius but more importantly standing in that area is going to increase your damage by 15 percent that's a huge buff it's also going to make it so that everything that attacks you in that radius does 15 percent less damage so it makes you way tankier and increases your damage at the same time all while putting a nice dot on the enemy and then also we'll touch on how this ultimate plays with your passives as an important part of your sustain once i dive into passives next one thing to note here about the way our armor and our gear plays together we're running ring of the pell order and ring of the pell order is an item that benefits heavily from the more dots that you have on the enemy because every one of those dots is healing you every time it ticks and does a little bit of damage that tick is coming back and healing you so the more dots you have the more ticks of health you have coming back into you and so it's almost impossible to die on a dragon knight if you have all your dots running and then you become invincible once you combine that with brawling all right next up i'm going to jump into passives and i'm going to go over why we use the passives that we're using and how they affect the way you play the character the first one is combustion which increases the damage of your burning and poison status effects by 50 percent well we're doing quite a bit of poison damage on this character and they're definitely feeling that buff when you apply burning to an enemy you restore 500 magic and when you apply poison to an enemy you restore 500 stamina well there's a part of the reason our sustain is so incredible in this guy we're constantly burning the enemy and we're constantly poisoning them next we have warmth when you deal direct damage with an ardent flame ability you reduce the enemy's movement speed by 30 percent for three seconds that's always nice searing heat increase our damage over time of our fiery breath searing strike and dragonite standard by 33 percent and their duration by four seconds this is essential gotta have it world in ruin increases the damage of your flame area of effect ability by six percent and decreases the cost of your stamina poison abilities by 25 percent here's another reason why our sustain is so great we're using some poison abilities and they're costing 25 percent less that is a huge huge buff in this game. Under the Draconic Power Line, we're going to take Iron Skin for 10% damage mitigation while blocking. We're going to take Burning Heat, which says while we have a Draconic ability active, our healing received is increased by 12%. So we have Volatile Armor up at all times, which means all the healing we have coming in is 12% more effective. We're taking Elder Dragon, increasing our health recovery by 5% for each Draconic ability slotted. We've got one, so we've got 5% more health recovery. But more importantly, this increases the range of our melee attacks by 2 meters. You really feel this when you're using the abilities that this applies to, that little extra range, being able to tap things while you're rotating around them. It feels really nice. Under the Earthen Heart line, we're going to take Battle Roar. This is going to give us all three resources back when we cast our ultimate. It gives us 46 health, magicka, and stamina when we use our ultimate per point of ultimate cost, right? So when we use this ultimate that costs 250 ultimate, that means it's going to give us over 11,000 of all of our resources back, our health, our mag, and our stam. It's going to top us off. So a Dragonite definitely is supposed to use their ultimate as part of their sustain. If you have a long fight coming up, if you can wait until you're down to about half of your resources to pop your ultimate, that's really going to push you right back up to full and help out with your sustain a lot. Next, let's jump into our weapons. We're going to be using a two-handed weapon, so we're going to take all of the two-handed passives. These are going to do things like increase your damage with two-handed abilities, make them more efficient. They cost less when you upgrade these passives, and also your light attacks, because of Forceful, are going to hit 
three additional enemies every time you attack one thing, right? They get 50% of the damage applied to them. So you hit four things at a time with your lighted axe with a two-handed weapon. And then heavy weapons here is why I was suggesting to go maul if you can. If you can't, it's not a huge deal. It's not going to make or break your character. It's just the ideal weapon to use, the two-handed maul, because it gives you that armor penetration of 3,300. I didn't get one of those, so I used the sword, which is increasing my weapon damage by 284, which is also a nice bonus. For the bow, we're going to grab all the passives again, because yet again, the bow passives are going to do things like increase your damage, improve your sustain. And then there's one interesting one here at the end, hasty retreat. When you roll dodge, you move 30% faster. So you'll see me roll dodge a lot when going from one place to another to take advantage of the 30% increased move speed for four seconds. We're going to grab all of the medium armor passives. You can wear one piece of heavy if you want. If you're feeling way too squishy, you can take one piece of heavy, like a heavy helmet and wear that and then take all but the last heavy armor passive. That's going to help give you some more resistances and give you a little bit more sustain. In the fighter's guilds, we're going to take the first four fighter's guild passives. One of the interesting things that these passives do is increase the damage we do. So on the front bar, we have one ability slotted. So it's buffing all the damage we do on that bar by 3%. Fighter's Guild abilities are really nice bar buffers for this reason. Also, Banish the Wicked, we generate three ultimate whenever we kill an enemy. So because we have this here, every time we're killing an enemy, we get three ultimate. Fantastic. It's so useful for building ult charge. Next, we have Skill Tracker. Our Fighter's Guild abilities do an additional 20% damage to Undead, Daedra, and Werewolves. This isn't very significant because we're not going to be using this ability very often. I Ideally, we're going to be using our back bar ultimate, but it's nice to have in the event that you do end up using it. You're going to grab both undaunted passives. These are going to help increase your sustain and your max resource pools. We're going to grab the continuous attack passive. This increases your move speed on amount by 30%. This is the only passive you're not going to max out. You're just going to put one point into this one. If you put two points into this, it doesn't do anything for you unless you are in Cyrodiil and PVPing. We're going to grab all of our racial passives and then in alchemy, you're going to max out medicinal use, which is even more impressive actually because I just realized this character only has medicinal use level one which should be a little bit tough on my sustain and my sustain was fantastic even with level one it would have been better if I had this maxed out medicinal use makes your potions last as long as the cooldown it keeps the uptime on your endurance that you get from the potions right you've got endurance which increases your stamina recovery by 30 percent for 40 seconds and you see the potion cooldown is 45 seconds if I had that passive maxed out it would say it lasts 47 seconds out of 45 so I even have a little bit of extra time to pop my next potion before my effects wear off. Okay, as for our rotation, we're gonna start with our self buffs. We're gonna pre buff with volatile armor and flames of oblivion. Then we're gonna go ahead and drop endless hail and noxious breath on the enemy. We wanna get noxious breath on them sooner than later because this gives them that 6,000 resistance debuff, which means everything we do here forth is gonna do more damage. Then we're gonna switch to the front bar, get our venomous claw on them as soon as possible. This thing is doing a ton of damage Then drop our other dot, our consuming trap on them. Now it's time to use are spammable all of these dots are quite long so you get to brawl for quite a while at this point it's insane how long you get to brawl for after you get all these dots up and running so you're gonna throw in a lot of brawl swings and then once these things start falling off go ahead and re replace your brawler with a skill that's dropping off as necessary once the enemy gets below 31 percent health go ahead and start using your executioner if it's safe to do so. Every brawler has died because they went for executioner when they probably should have brawled just to play it safe. Sometimes it's tempting and sometimes you just gotta resist the urge to execute. All right, as for our champion points, with Blackwood, champion points have been adjusted once again. Zoss has compressed the champion point power creep. What this means for you is you get stronger sooner. It used to be our power was capping out around CP 21 or 2200. Now you cap out in power at 1650. So much sooner than you used to. So you're going to reach max power a lot quicker. I'm very excited about this change. It means a lot less grinding for all of us to reach our character's maximum potential. They've also added a healer subtree here, but we're not going to spend much time on that because we're a solo DPS. We are also seeing a really significant adjustment to the way preparation works in the chest here this passive was not only buffed but it also costs half as many points to max it out so it's giving us 10 percent damage reduction for only 20 points that's pretty awesome we're definitely going to grab this a little bit earlier than we used to as a result and if your character feels squishy feel free to deviate from the order that i suggest and grab this sooner than later to take that 10 percent less damage from all incoming attacks this is a very very effective passive in the case that you do want to prioritize damage 
damage though, it's going to look something like this. We're going to start with precision, put 20 points in, then we're going to put 50 points into fighting finesse and slot that because it is a slottable. Remember, you do have to slot slottables onto the bar up here. Otherwise, you don't get anything for them. Basically, anything that's not a yellow star needs to be slotted. A purple star means it's a sub menu. A yellow star means it's always active and the blue stars here mean you got to slot them. We're going to level that up and slot it. Then we're going to go into the elbow. We're going to put 20 points into piercing. We're going to back out. We're going to put 50 points into deadly aim, 50 points into thaumaturge, and 50 points into biting aura. Those are all slottable, so make sure you slot all three. Then we're going to go over here to tireless discipline and put 20 points into that. Then we're going to go into the chest. We're going to put 10 points into quick recovery and 20 points into preparation. Then we're going to back out. We're going to go back into the elbow and we're going to put 20 points into battle mastery. We're going to fill up mighty. Then we're going to put 20 more points into battle mastery again. And for where to put your points beyond this, be sure to refer to the written guide linked in the description below. Next, let's talk about the red tree. We're going to start off by putting 50 points into boundless vitality and 50 points into rejuvenation. These are both slottables, so make sure you slot them. And remember, after you slot these slottables, you also have to hit the confirm button or else you're not getting credit for them. So make sure after you're done putting your points in that you do hit the confirm button at the bottom or else everything you do doesn't count yet. Then we're going to go here to templing and put 15 points in. Then we're going to put 10 points into mystic tenacity, 20 points into hero's vigor, and 50 points into bloody renewal. Make sure to slot bloody renewal as it is a slottable then we're going to go back over here to ironclad put 50 points into that and slot it as well then we're going to top off tumbling and we're going to top off defiance then we're going to go over to this side put eight points into hasty fill up tireless guardian fill up fortification fill up hasty now and then fill up sprinter for where to put your points beyond this point, be sure to check out the written guide linked in the description below. Last but not least, the green tree. The green tree is a tree that is meant to not be min-max. There's no additional power to be found here. There's no wrong or right choice. Basically, you're going to want to invest in the things that apply to what you're doing. This side over here on the left is thieving. This side over here is fishing. This is potion and food efficiency. And then you, in the chest area here, you have nodes and treasure chests and gear related things like disassembly basically pick the things that seem like they're going to be the most useful for you and choose those passives but don't forget to slot them if they're slottables i'm going to let you choose where to put these points however if you want to know which ones i usually grab i'll put that in the written guide linked in the description below all right guys that's it that's all there is to the solo stamina dragon knight i am incredibly impressed with how this class is performing this patch i can't wait to spend more time on this class in blackwood as far as solo content goes it is one of the strongest stamina classes i've played on this patch if not the strongest stamina class i've played on it's in a great spot it's doing good things and i hope you enjoyed this guide i hope you found it interesting or useful or you learned something. And if you did, please consider liking and subscribing so that YouTube knows to share this content with more people. If you have any questions about the build, don't hesitate to ask in the comments down below. I try to answer every single one. If you ever want to hang out with someone else who loves ESO, swing by my stream over at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost. And finally, I'd like to thank my YouTube members for supporting the channel by becoming members. To find out how to become a member of this channel and what the perks are, click the join button below. I hope you have a fantastic day, night, or evening, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next episode.